He said, he said something to me one time, a long time ago, at Chris Lighty's wedding. He told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, f what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> you ran up on me? This is remote money, right? Remote money, baby. Good money, baby. Good money, right here. Good money, right here. Good money, right here, man. I don't know what Talking about, bro. Oh, that's a nice gesture. Let's Let me go. get out. No, dude, take me. That's still what a guy oh, says to a girl. From dominating the streets with raw hits to becoming a respected figure in the rap world, Nor built a career on staying true to himself. Until now, after decades of influence, one decision, one alliance, and it all crumbled. You've heard the rumors and seen the signs, but now we're diving into why Nor lost all respect in hip hop and why 50 Cent may have just sealed his fate forever. Nor used to be a name you couldn't avoid in hip hop. From his early days with Capone and Noriega to his breakout solo career, he commanded respect on the streets. He was raw, unfiltered, and everything the culture stood for. But somewhere along the way, he lost his way. I really thought that this was what the, that moment was. This was Illuminati, and I turned it down. But at what price did Nor regain his fame? The hip hop world watched as a once legit name turned into something questionable. It's a tale as old as the industry itself. An artist at the top, tempted with an offer too good to refuse. And Nor, after years of being overlooked, made his choice. A choice that opened a door he would never come back from. There's, a, there's three different doors, right? There's three different ways to walk. Straight is your own, your own. Let's see if you continue this success, young man. Okay. Let's see if it was all about your skills, young man. To the right, I'm not sure if that's the homo right there. And then there's to the left, I'm not sure if there's some sacrifice going on right there. Let's break down exactly why the hip hop community turned their backs on Noor, and how his alliance with Diddy may have been the last nail in the coffin. Before the drink champs, before the Maybach, Noor was a force to be reckoned with. Raised in Queens, New York, his early life was filled with the same struggles and street life that defined much of his music. His first big break came with the formation of Capone and Noriega, a rap duo that quickly made waves in the underground hip hop scene. Their debut album, The War Report, is still considered a classic. From there, his solo career took off. Tracks like Super Thug and Nothing solidified him as a star in the early 2000s. But after a few years, the hit slowed down and the spotlight began to fade. Like many artists in his position, Nor faced a choice, fade into the background or find a way back to the top. But as the hit slowed down, something shifted. Nor's career was no longer what it used to be. And that's where Diddy came in. We all know about Diddy. His influence over the industry, his power over certain artists, and his ability to pull strings behind the scenes. A recent video clip shows Diddy giving Noor a very expensive car, a Maybach, for his birthday. This made Noor emotional and he was almost in tears. Sir, you, know, sir, you ran up on me? This is remote money right here. Remote money, baby. Good money, good. Good money, good. This is good money right here. Good money right here, man. I don't know what the Talking about, bro. Diddy's gift seemed like a generous act on the surface, but to the hip hop world, it symbolized something much darker. That Maybach wasn't just a car, it was a sign. A sign that Noor had chosen his door, and it was Diddy's. Did Noor make the right choice by staying with Diddy and not joining the Illuminati? What kind of influence does Diddy have over Noor now? And what does this expensive car really mean for their relationship? If you ask 50 Cent, he believes that so many celebrities have sold their body to Diddy. You see, 50 has been quite vocal about Diddy's role in the industry. For starters, Fifth has always called out Diddy for allegedly being gay. You see, the G-Unit leader once made it clear that he has reservations about attending Diddy's notorious parties, which have been shrouded in mystery and the focus of endless gossip. During an unspecified concert, 50 Cent candidly shared with an amused audience that he deliberately avoided avoids puffy parties. That's why I don't be going to them puffy parties. Uh-uh. Hug you from the front and the back at the same time. 50 Cent has made a habit of poking fun at Diddy over rumors surrounding his sexuality. In the world of hip-hop, where rumors and gossip are almost as prevalent as the music itself, it's essential to understand how these rumors took root. It all started with a story 50 Cent shared about the time Diddy allegedly offered to take him shopping and pay for his new clothes. This incident became a focal point for 50's playful jabs at Diddy. According to 50, Diddy's offer left him bewildered. He told me to take me shopping. 
I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? Diddy, however, later explained it away as a gesture of kindness, claiming that he thought 50 needed new clothes. I thought he needed some clothes. He doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. What? I'm a nice guy! While Diddy attempted to brush it off as a harmless offer, fans had a different perspective. They questioned why a successful artist like 50 Cent, who clearly had the means to buy his own clothes, would receive such an offer. This incident was just the beginning of the intrigue surrounding Diddy's behavior. The feud took an unexpected turn when Diddy made a high-profile appearance on the popular podcast Drink Champs alongside rapper Fabulous. The episode went viral, with fans and media outlets dissecting every moment of the conversation. 50 Cent, true to form, couldn't resist the opportunity to stir the pot. He took to Instagram, posting a picture of himself in a hospital bed surrounded by stuffed animals, accompanied by the words, currently recovering from pettiness. In the caption, 50 Cent wrote, Sorry, I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. These comments, as expected, set off a fresh wave of speculation and commentary. What was 50 Cent insinuating? Was there something more significant beneath the surface? While 50's words were undoubtedly laced with humor, they raised concerns about the industry's secrets and hidden agendas. One aspect that has fueled the rumors and conspiracies surrounding Diddy and other industry moguls is the world of celebrity parties. These exclusive gatherings, often attended by the who's who of the music and entertainment industry, have long been shrouded in secrecy and speculation. Fans and insiders alike have questioned what really goes on at these parties. Are they just glamorous affairs filled with music and revelry, or do they harbor deeper secrets and clandestine dealings? Some believe that these parties are where powerful figures in the industry exert their influence and control over up-and-coming artists. The concept of doing favors for top-ranking individuals in the industry has been a persistent rumor. It's alleged that to achieve success, aspiring artists may be required to engage in activities that compromise their integrity. These rumors have circulated for years, casting a shadow over the industry's elite gathering. Back to 50 Cent's comments regarding Diddy hugging men from behind, it's worth noting that 50 had previously addressed a similar situation a few months ago. That's why I don't be going to the puppy parties. Uh-uh. Oh, you for the front and the back at the same time? 50 also talked about Diddy's creepy behavior when a photo went viral showing Lil Baby being embraced by billionaire Michael Rubin and Kyle Cosma at Rubin's exclusive white party in the Hamptons. The image of this embrace raised eyebrows as Rubin is over 20 years older than Lil Baby. Many found it inappropriate, and it prompted discussions about the nature of these interactions at such parties. 50 Cent posted this particular photo on his Instagram account, and even though Diddy wasn't present at Rubin's party, the image appeared to trigger memories of similar situations at Puffy's gatherings. In his characteristic style, 50 Cent couldn't resist commenting, See, this is why I don't go to no party Puffy and them at. What the F is going on here? Then there's the surviving Diddy documentary. Last year, a representative for 50 Cent confirmed to TMZ that the 48-year-old rapper's production company G-Unit Films and Television is developing a documentary about the allegations against Combs. The rep said proceeds from the documentary will benefit victims of S.A. and R. Jackson teased a snippet of the documentary on Instagram on Wednesday. In the clip, former Bad Boy Records rapper Mark Curry said Combs would spike bottles of Moet with a substance that would make women at nightclubs slippery. Curry alleged that Combs would tell his friends and associates not to drink from certain bottles. Yeah, they'd been to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they'd be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. In any case, we all know Sean Diddy Combs, also known as Puffy Puff Daddy P. Diddy, Love and Brother Love, is a famous music producer and rapper. He has been very successful in the music industry, helping make hip-hop popular and mainstream. However, recently he has been facing serious accusations of S.U.L. and physical abuse. Four women, including his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura, have come forward with these allegations. One man, music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, also accused him of a Now let's change gear and delve into this story. CCTV footage has emerged of the rapper Sean Diddy Combs physically assaulting his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in the corridor of a hotel in 2016. Sean John Combs was born in Harlem, New York, and grew up in Mount Vernon, New York. His mother Janice was a teacher's assistant. His father Melvin was involved in drug tea and was shot dead when Sean was just two years old. Sean learned about his father's death when he was older. Growing up, Sean loved rap music and played football. 
As a teenager, he danced in music videos for famous artists. Sean went to Howard University to study business administration but left early to work at Uptown Records in New York. He became well known for throwing big parties and started working with artists like Mary J. Blige and Jodeci. In the early 1990s, Sean signed a rapper named Christopher Wallace. Known as Biggie Smalls or The Notorious Big after leaving Uptown Records, Sean started his own label, Bad Boy Records, and took Biggie with him. Biggie's debut album, Ready to Die, became a huge success. Bad Boy Records released many hit albums from artists like Faith Evans, Mace, and 112. Their music was very popular on the radio. Sean and Biggie became very close, but tragedy struck in 1997 when Biggie was shot and killed. Sean was deeply affected by this and released a song called I'll Be Missing You in memory of Biggie. The song became a huge hit. Throughout his career, Sean faced several legal issues. In 1991, nine people died, and many were injured at a celebrity basketball game and concert he co-promoted. An inquiry said Sean was responsible for hiring inexperienced security guards. Sean denied responsibility but paid $750,000 as part of a settlement. On December 27, 1999, Combs, his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, and his protege rapper Shine were at Club New York in Times Square in Manhattan when gunfire broke out. A prosecutor said that the incident was sparked by an argument at the club between Combs and another patron. After a police investigation, Combs and Shine were arrested for weapons violations and other charges. Combs was charged with four weapons-related charges and with bribing his driver, Wardle Fenderson, to claim ownership of his gun. With a gag order in place, the highly publicized trial began. Combs' attorneys were Johnny L. Cochran Jr. and Benjamin Braffman. Combs was found not guilty on all charges. Shine was convicted on five of his eight charges and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Combs and Lopez broke up shortly after. A lawsuit filed by Fenderson who said he suffered emotional damage after the shooting was settled in February 2004. Lawyers for both sides, having agreed to keep the settlement term secret, said the matter had been resolved to the satisfaction of all parties. In 2003, Sean's former business partner sued him, claiming Sean threatened him and forced him to sign over his shares in Bad Boy Records. The case was dismissed because too much time had passed. On November 16, 2023, Cassie Ventura, with whom Combs had a long-term relationship, filed a lawsuit against him accusing him of R, S, T, and physical abuse. The lawsuit also suggested that Combs was responsible for blowing up Ventura's then-boyfriend Kid Cudi's car. Combs and Ventura reached a $30 million settlement the following day and the lawsuit was dismissed. On May 17, 2024, CNN released surveillance footage of Combs physically assaulting Ventura at a hotel in Century City, Los Angeles on March 5, 2016. This incident was among the allegations made in the lawsuit. On May 19, 2024, Combs issued a video apology on Instagram and Facebook stating he was truly sorry and that his actions were inexcusable. I was f***ed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. In November 2023, three women accused Sean of a and a s***. One woman, Joy Dickerson Neal, said Sean drugged and suly her in 1991. Another woman, Liza Gardner, accused Sean of coercing her into S and then choking her. In December 2023, a fourth woman claimed Sean and two other men are at her when she was 17 years old. She said she was given drugs and alcohol before the attack. Sean denied all these allegations, saying they were attempts to get money from him. In February 2024, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a music producer, sued Sean. He said Sean made unwanted s -will contact and forced him to participate in s -will acts. Sean's lawyer called these claims lies and said they had proof to discredit them. In March 2024, federal agents raided two of Sean's homes as part of an investigation into ST. Sean's lawyer called the raids an ambush and said Sean was in innocent. Computers and other devices were taken during the searches. Fast forward to four weeks ago, Diddy was finally arrested on charges of racketeering, STFing, and SA. Enter 50 Cent. Fifth has been vocal about his disdain for those who play the game dirty, and recently, Nor became his latest target. According to 50, Nor's career is no longer his own. It belongs to Diddy. 
And the truth is, many in the industry feel the same way. But Noor's fall from grace goes deeper than just a few bad decisions. It's about the doors he opened. Noor himself admitted it. When artists reach a certain level of success, they're faced with three paths. The Illuminati door, the homo door, or the straight door. And while many assumed Noor chose the straight path, his recent actions suggest otherwise. The truth is, Noor's alliance with Diddy was his choice, and it came with a cost. A cost that has left the hip-hop world questioning his integrity. At the end of the day, Noor's career has taken a turn that many never saw coming. Once a respected figure in the rap game, he's now seen as just another pawn in Diddy's empire. The hip-hop world may have forgiven a lot of things, but selling your soul? That's a line you can't come back from. So is this really the end for Noor? Only time will tell. But as of now, the streets are talking, and they're saying goodbye. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.